Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom jack-o'-lantern. Now this video is a product of uh, a uh, time-lapse video that I've posted previously that showed how we took just a photo of a pumpkin in the day and then converted it into a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, this tutorial is not going to cover that entire process. We're actually going to start with the pumpkin already having been converted into a nighttime scene, even with some of the particle background effects. And this is just going to focus on uh, creating that sort of cutout effect with a custom shape. The process of converting the daytime image to this sort of nighttime glowing pumpkin uh, has a lot to do with another video I have, which is called the day to night video. And you can find that in the cards after this video is over. Uh, so let's jump into just creating the custom cutout. So we're starting off with this picture of the pumpkin already converted to sort of a nighttime scene and already having sort of its internal glow effect applied. Uh, I'm going to make this image available on my Patreon page, but it'll actually be available to everybody. I'm going to make it a public post. Uh, so you can start with this image and uh, kind of follow along with, with what I'm doing, but using your own shape, whatever custom shape you want to do. So for me, for this particular one, I'm going to go with sort of the classic pumpkin face, and I'm going to draw those shapes using vector graphics. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the symmetric shape here. And, and one thing you'll notice is I have uh, the number of sides set to three and the radius set to 55. And what I found is that that level of setting is what can actually get you a triangle. But in my particular case, um, what I would like to start with is a, is kind of a more ye a bright glowing yellow color. And this this is we're going to modify this as we go. But this just kind of gets that that initial color in place and just going to draw a single eye. Um, and just because I'd like there to be some consistency, you can select this shape with the pick tool and say control C and control G. And that will allow you to then paste a copy of that vector object. And then at this stage, we can just, you know, manipulate them to how we want, like where and what orientation we want the eyes to be. And then can do that again, maybe scale it down a little bit for the nose. And one thing I would say, especially in this particular case, uh, I'm not going to go down the path of using displacement maps to try to modify these shapes to match the contours of the pumpkin. So I'm just going to try to be strategic and avoid, you know, some of these very sharp creases as I'm placing these objects. Next, for the mouth, I'm going to use the pen tool um, in uh, the draw point to point but Bezier curve mode. And then just just to add a nice big smile to this guy, you know, click it someplace, click a second place, and then kind of drag. But uh, for me to kind of have a sharp corner for this mouth to kind of swoop down, we got to right click on the node and change the node type to cusp. And then now I can independently swing this guy down. And so that when I do my next click, it's going to, you know, follow this and create a sharp point. So with that there, I'll do my last click and it's not going to be connected. It's just going to kind of get me close selecting the edit mode tool and then just grab this and dragging it close enough till I see the word join. There we go. So now I have an enclosed shape. And then I can change this node type to symmetric and then drag these out just to give my jack-o'-lantern a nice, big, happy smile. So now we have our basic shape. And what I want to do is I want to create a mask based on this reference. So I can take my magic wand tool and with my vector layer selected, and my match mode set to opacity, I can just click somewhere kind of, you know, not on one of those shapes, and it's going to select everything except for the shapes I just created. Then what I can do is go to mask and say hide all, hide selection, because essentially I want to hide all of this except for the, the face part that I just created. 
So then right click to turn off the selection. And now I just want to add some highlights. So I'm going to create a new raster layer on top. Select a standard paintbrush. Uh, default shape is perfectly fine. You want kind of a lower hardness because we really want a lot of this to just blend. And then we'll change our stroke color to like white, basically. And then really what we're going to do here is just, you know, kind of paint some highlights, you know, really, really kind of give that glowing sort of effect. You know, the yellow really only represents, uh, you know, kind of like, like part of the gradient, if you will. And you don't have to do too much. It's just really to kind of make it, give it that, that sort of sense that like the most inner parts of this pumpkin is like super bright white from an exposure point of view. So next we're gonna create another layer underneath this mask, but now what we wanna do is a much tighter brush, a much tighter hardness, probably even smaller size. And we'll wanna sample a color from the pumpkin. You know, just somewhere that, that represents this sort of orangey red color. And then what we're gonna do is just carefully draw along this edge and part of, part, and, and you know, barely bleeding over. And really what we're trying to do is just make that edge seem not not so harsh right like that you know a real a real carved pumpkin isn't going to have these perfect straight edges so we're just we're just creating that detail i would i would recommend placing more emphasis on the sides of these these uh cutouts you know where you think you would see some edging of the pumpkin uh, so like on the inners, the inner parts, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as strong because in a way this kind of creates the, the visual sort of illusion of, of like an, like an inner edge. So just kind of experiment till it looks the way you want it to be. All right, so now that we have that sort of detail in place, next what we want to do is actually create more of like that edging of the inside of the pumpkin cutout. So we'll create a new layer. You can do it on the same layer. I like to keep things separate in case I need to do some erasing or other things. But um, so same. now we want to keep the same brush, same color, everything, but just uh, make the brush larger and maybe bring the hardness down just a little bit. You'll have to experiment here. And really what we're trying to do is just create sort of like this, this gradient of like, hey, look, there's there's where the you know thickness of the pumpkin is actually coming through. There actually is some rind or flesh, if you will, you know that that is creating sort of the the depth of the pumpkin. And how thick you make this will kind of give off how you know how thick the pumpkin itself actually is. Okay, so now that we've got sort of that three-dimensional effect added to it, what we want to do is add some glow. So what we can do is we can, this can either be redrawn or you can leverage um, what you've created prior for that sort of inner white glow. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to duplicate that sort of inner white glow and drag it all the way on top of my mask layer. So we can see it kind of, you know, in, in rough order represents... Um, you know, sort of a, a glowing effect, um, switching back to a white color once again. Um, we could we could make this a little bit bigger, right? A little bit more, maybe not quite so opaque, but um, a little bit more, you know, expanding beyond what we were doing before. And then we can just sort of like drop the opacity on this, right? Because really all it's trying to do is be sort of like this, this sort of glowing glare, you know, it, like it's like diffusing the light right around, um, you know, where the light's coming from the jack-o'-lantern. And then next, just because I think it adds like a nice bit of texture and a little bit more glow, what we can do is if we right click and say copy merge and paste as a new layer, Then we can bring up particle, particle shop as an effect. 
And then in this case, what I like to use is a haze um, and using a really bright color, you know, like some, but in this case, something more yellow, right? To, to represent, you know, not just white, but sort of that inner candle glow color. Um, and you can see, you know, not a super large size somewhere in the middle and, uh, you know, not, not a super dense count. And I'm just using a mouse. I'm not using a pen in this case, although a pen would be perfectly fine. Uh, another key aspect to maintain the color is don't turn on glow, as glow is just going to only colorize the edges of your, uh, you know, your particle paints. But really all we're trying to do is just paint around, maybe make it a little bigger, um, paint around the areas that should be glowing, right? That's, that's really what we're trying to do, is just kind of add another sort of like haze glow here. All right, and once we're done with that, we can just click save and then say save only brush strokes. It's going to come in as another layer and then we can just change this to sort of like hard light and then just bring it down, you know, to whatever level of, you know, glow that you like. And I just like that little bit of texture that it adds to sort of the glowing effect. You don't have to use Particle Shop to get a textured sort of glow like that. That's just um, when I was experimenting what I came across and I kind of liked how it looked. But essentially, this is it. So uh, you can do whatever shapes you want. Um, I obviously went conventional with the triangles and the big open mouth. But if you have a logo or you have text, um, this those can absolutely work as well. It'll just be take a little bit more effort to sort of create that cutout shading uh, around the different the different parts that are are the holes in the pumpkin. But anyway, I hope this was beneficial. I hope you learned uh, some, some important things in Paint Shop Pro, and that you can make some really fun Halloween decorations. Anyway, that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen, and I'll see you guys next time.